The Loop is yet another stunning and futuristic mega project in Dubai. Believe it or not, this project is an enclosed transportation structure that is solely designed for cyclists and pedestrians just to keep the population happy, healthy, and connected. Of course, that alone would be just boring. Thus, it also encompasses vertical farming, housing, entertainment, well-being spots, city-related infrastructure, clean energy production, and, prepare to be surprised here, a Hyperloop 2. Yes, the $22 billion, 93-kilometer-long loop around Dubai will encompass all these things, and it will even be climate-controlled. But Dubai has a history of creating fancy mega-projects to drive tourism and prestige. Many have succeeded, whilst many have been a massive failure. Will this project live up to the hype, or will it, too, become another white elephant? Dubai has a big problem. The city was built so fast and at such a colossal rate that many design flaws eventually began to reveal themselves. In any metropolitan city in the world, social connectivity plays a huge part in the well-being of its residents. Many people prefer walking, running, or cycling to visit others, run errands, or reach work. But the main modes of transport in Dubai are currently cars, transit buses, and taxis, which is quite inconvenient for most people. Many parts of the metro don't reach the suburbs, and you can kiss goodbye to cycling to work in this city. Dubai is notoriously known for its lack of connected long cycling and running paths, and in the summer, temperatures can reach up to 50 degrees Celsius, meaning most outdoor activities stop completely. What this place has always needed is a megastructure that connects the city seamlessly for its residents all throughout the year, but at the same time breaks a few records, as always with Dubai, and creates a tourist attraction that encourages people from all over the world to visit. Dubai is heavily reliant on tourism and the migration of wealthy investors, thus building fancy structures that are green, futuristic, and entertaining is a necessity for the city's economy and future. So in steps, the loop. In simple words, it is a 93 kilometer long enclosed and climate controlled cycling and pedestrian superhighway that will encircle the entire Dubai metropolis. The width of this colossal structure will vary from 25 meters to more than 150 meters in areas where vertical farms, entertainment areas, well-being centers, cafes, restaurants, green hotels, and small villa villages will be built within the structure. The main features are the paths. For most of the length of the structure, there will only be pathways. Each side features one path for walkers and runners that is separated by a green median strip from a path for cyclists. A wide green median strip with parts that are designed for socializing, equipped with seats, tables, fountains, and kiosks, will separate the two opposite direction paths. The structure itself is made from a steel frame and reinforced glass with heat reflection properties. Let's now dive into the exciting stuff. How will they build it? And what are the engineering technologies used? Naturally, such a long structure that encircles an entire city would pass over roads, highways, water bodies, railways, and near beaches. Additionally, this structure has to be as flat as possible, meaning it cannot go up and down as the terrain changes. To solve this problem, the structure will sit on a reinforced concrete slab with a sublevel for maintenance, water mains, sewage mains, electricity lines, and communication infrastructure that will serve many of the current and future adjacent parts of the city. Hence, several sections of the loop will be elevated above the ground or designed as bridges over roads, highways, railways, and such. As for the structure itself, it will be a combination of steel-supported glazed facades and roofs and an arc that extends from one edge of the concrete slab to the other with various heights depending on width. Steel is being used because when glazing has to support distances over 4 meters, other materials just won't cut it and are not durable enough to withstand the weight of reinforced glass and elements of nature. The loop will also generate electricity using one of the cleanest energy sources on the planet footsteps. Imagine this, every step by a person on the paths inside the loop will generate electricity that is transferred to the main power grid. To achieve this, they are using an innovative technology called kinetic paving. The science behind the marvelous technology is quite simple. Certain materials will generate an electrical current when they are placed under mechanical stress by, in this case, being stepped on. This is called the piezoelectric effect. The paving and floors are made from recycled car tires that flex when stepped on, thus resulting in kinetic energy. 
Up to 5 watts of power will be generated by every single step, hence if 200,000 people took an average of 1,000 steps each per day in the loop, they would produce 1 gigawatt of power per day, which is enough to power thousands of homes. So, will they have air conditioners to make the loop cool since it is in a desert climate? The answer is absolutely no. They will utilize trees and shrubs to achieve such a complex endeavor. As we said earlier, the paths are separated by green medians. Additionally, several sections will feature gardens. Hence, the entire structure is designed as a garden, and as you already know, certain plants are natural air conditioners. The simple science is, trees and plants go through a process called transpiration, which makes plants sort of sweat, which evaporates, causing heat to be removed from the air, which provides a cooling effect. Some plants are better than others as air coolers, and some of these plants also produce more oxygen than others, hence you can expect the loop to be full of plants such as Sansevierias, which also remove toxins from the air, rubber plants or Ficus elastica, weeping fig plants, Chinese evergreen, or a Gleonema. And to the joy of emirates, the palms like areca palms, fern palms, fishtail palm, and lady palm, which feature small stomas that take in CO2 and release oxygen. They will also give the structure a rainforest feel. The irrigation system that will be used for watering the plants and gardens in the loop is based on 100% recyclability, meaning every drop of water and the moisture accumulated inside is collected, recycled, and reused to water the plants. As we also said earlier, the loop will also feature vertical farms, which are the future of feeding humanity. Vertical farming is the practice of growing crops in vertically stacked layers. It often incorporates controlled environment agriculture, which aims to optimize plant growth and soilless farming techniques such as hydroponics, aquaponics, and aeroponics. This makes the loop a perfect location for such farms because money will be saved on the need for artificial lighting since the entire structure acts as a greenhouse with a favorable year-round climate. Some sections of the loop will be quite wide as small green sustainable villa villages will be integrated into the structure and other villages will feature green hotels, monuments, restaurants, museums, galleries, cafes, and shops. This will turn the structure into a tourist attraction. Finally, the sublevel of the loop features concrete tubes for a future Hyperloop, which is an ultra-high-speed green transportation system for both public and goods transport. The developer, URB, has not said much about this part, hence we are guessing it will be a surprise in the future. We made a previous video about Hyperloops, so make sure to check it out. The answer to whether this project will achieve its goals or become a white elephant is yes, it will succeed. Evidence of the effectiveness of well-maintained, accessible, and long cycling and pedestrian paths in Europe proves beyond any doubt that once this structure is built, most of the city's population will use it as it adds to the quality of life. Thank you for watching and please do like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and feel free to share your thoughts with us on this project.